we spin it, it should sound good. I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase, told you how to run the race. Every move is on the page, right, but I didn't like it. Gang, you guys requested it, so I'm going to do it the best I can. A couple of videos ago, I posted, um, well, a couple days ago, I posted a video of me doing what I set up my pay leg rod and reel with, bobber bead, everything like that. And you guys liked it. A lot of you guys recommended that I uh, make a video of me getting a rod because I needed one. Um, so today, I'm making a 30-minute drive uh, to go pick up a rod it is a rain shadow it's a 10 foot rain shadow so i'm going to go look at it i'm going to go over a couple things when i get it back to the house if i get it um, because there's several things you need to look at before purchasing a rod so you make sure you don't burn yourself um, because a lot of these rods guys they get expensive and you don't want to buy something that's a limit um, and there's a, a couple things that you can check out and and you know check off the list and they'll make it a good rod as long as you follow these steps so what i'm going to do is is if i get the rod i'll take it back home um, I'll show you guys a couple things that you need to look for when buying a rod and then I'll also show you what you want to look for when you're buying a reel with the reel I got at the house. So you guys stay tuned. I'm going to go ahead and get the rod. We'll see you guys back at the house. All right guys, we made it back home. We got the rod that I just bought. I purchased off a gentleman on Facebook and then I got my reel, my Citrix Low Pro that I already have, Citrix 364. I'm going to pull you guys closer and I'm going to do the best I can to break it down um, and the couple things you need to look for when buying a used rod, remember a lot of you pay lakers just starting, you don't need to buy something brand new, um, buy something that's used. So you don't have to worry about if you break it, you didn't pay retail price for it. So buy a used rod, buy a used reel. This is going to be the couple things you want to look for when you're purchasing those things. I'll bring you guys closer. You guys can look at everything I'm going to show you. And that way you can be the next person to buy your setup. Plus, with how you rig it that I showed you last time, you guys will be ready to fish come spring. All right, so this right here is just four things that I look at when I buy a rod off someone, especially if it's used. You know that the rod's been used. It's caught fish. It's been through wear and tear. And so that's something that you can expect when buying a used rod. But four things that I look for, even when I bought this rod this evening, is the blank itself, which is the whole rod, the eyes, and that means the eyes itself, any guide that's around it, if it has like extra guiding support for it, check those. The inserts, you wanna make sure that those are in good shape. You wanna check the handle slash grip. A lot of reels, will, a lot of rods will have solid handles or split grips. Uh, and then the last thing you wanna check is the reel seat. Some rods have metal reel seats, some have plastic. You just wanna check those. You wanna make sure that they are in good tech they're in good tact and they're not gonna uh, have any cracks in them, any chips in them, because that can mess up. Um, if you're like me, I've had experiences to where I've had fish break the reel seat the rest of the way, but we'll throw this out of the way and I'll get closer. Okay, so now that you guys can physically see the rod, this is a 10 foot rain shadow. So when you look at these rods, you just wanna overview them, make sure that the blank itself has no deep scratches, no cracks, no chips, because when that happens, when you set the hook into a fish, that's gonna raise your chances of snapping your rod. You can get away with some scratches. Um, that just takes down the visual price point of the rod itself. But as you can see, this rod does have a little bit of paint chipping on it, which it's no biggie. This was a used rod, so I definitely do expect that. But you wanna check out all the eye inserts I've had these pop loose on me. If they have extra guiding, like these guys right here, and behind the eye itself, check that to make sure these aren't bent in any way. Don't manhandle anyone's rod to break it on purpose, but just check them, fill around, make sure they're all secure and in good tact. In this case, this rod is, so that's a plus. Moving down, check the rest of your rod to make sure that it doesn't have any kind of chips, cracks, or scratches on it. Um, in this case, this one doesn't, this is very good. You want to check right there where the rods connect to make sure that this top circle piece doesn't have any cracks, that it's a solid piece, because these can break like straws if you're not careful. Just continue to check all your eyes to make sure they're good. In this case, they are. Now, this is what I was talking about as far as the handles and grips go. If you look at the bottom, it has a, a grip on it. 
and then it's blank rod, and then it has another grip. This is called split grips. It's not a solid handle. Now, other rods such as Moon Snipers, Prevails, MCAST, it's a solid rubber handle. So on those, you want to check them all and make sure there's no cracks in them or anything um, in the rubber. And if there is, it's not going to hurt the rod. It just brings down value. Um, but in this case, this is a custom rod. And so this has cork wrapping in it. It looks great, by the way. The builder did really well. Um, no issues with it. It's a little dirty, but it's a used rod. And this one has styrofoam grip underneath the reel. It has a metal reel seat with plastic um, reel screw down thing. Uh, and this is what I was talking about you want to check. Whether it's up top or whether it's down below, you want to check it to make sure that A, it goes all the way down and all the way up like it's supposed to. It doesn't get stuck. It means it's running like what it's supposed to on its threads. Now, a little bit of wear and tear from where this rod has been in a real seat. That's okay. That's nothing. It doesn't take away the integrity of the rod itself. But this guy back here, this is what you want to look at. This is the thing that's going to break on you if you have any issues. My old Moon Sniper, this part, it's where they make it in the factory and they glue it together, snapped in half on me. And what happened was after time and time of tightening and loosening your reel, this will wear down. So always when you buy a new rod, make sure that that's not glued or taped and make sure that it is safe and sound. This one looks good. I'm very satisfied. Um, the rod and all looks like a good rod. So let's go ahead and we'll grab the reel. All right, so moving on to the rod, uh, the reel. The reel is a lot more simpler than a rod. The rod, there's a lot of things you need to look at because if a rod breaks, you're out of some money. And a reel is worth money too, don't get me wrong, but a reel is very easy to find out if it's going to be a good reel. And you really don't find that out um, until you can really mess around with it. So the best thing to do is just overall grab the reel. You want to look at it. Um, this is a Citrix 364. It already has 832 suffix braid on it. So when I first got this reel, it did not come with this handle. This is my own handle. But you just want to flip the reel around. You want to see if there's any really bad scratches and rash on it. Rash is what we call this right here. This is a very heavily used reel. And a lot of this is from a rod holder. People just set it down in the rod holder and it scratches it up. This is just paint chip. This does not affect the reel itself. Um, always check these back here to make sure that they're not bent or anything. They never should be, but just to be safe, you want to check it as well as your hardware right here. So you have a drag system. Make sure it loosens. Make sure it tightens like it's supposed to. If you want to go an extra mile, loosen it up a little bit and put your thumb on here. Um, and then reel it to make sure it does let drag out. And then if you want to tighten it, you can do the same thing. So... You want to tighten it you can do the same exact thing to make sure the drag works in this case it does you want to check this guy this is your tensioner pull the line tensioner pretty much allows your line to come out however fast you want it same as on a bass reel um, you want to make sure that that works and you can tighten that up and if the and if it doesn't reel very fast with just your hand that means that it tightens up like it's supposed to and if you loosen it to let more string out it doesn't, no problem. So you don't have an issue. And then finally, we have a clicker. You just wanna make sure that the clicker works. And in this case, it does. So we're good. We have a good rod and we have a good reel. All right, so see, it's not as bad as you think. I know that going to buy something expensive for the pay lake that you're not used to using, it gets a little nerve wracking because you don't really know what to expect. But follow this guideline when you're looking at a rod. All you need to look at is the four points check the blank, check the eyes, check the real seats, check the handles, the grips, and you guys will be just fine. Inspect it, and the, and the owner will usually tell you if there's any issues. They wouldn't even be selling it um, because if a rod's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. And then as far as the reel goes, you guys, they're a little bit more lenient with it. Once you start throwing it, um, you can really get the idea of if it needs oil or anything. And, and that's another thing. Um, there's a thing that you can check right back here in the back. I'll do a close up real quick so you can see it. Check this little guy back here in the back and just if it has oil in it, it doesn't look like no corroding in it, then good. And when you do it, when you spin it, it should sound good. It should sound just like that. It should sound not screechy, not really horrible. You guys are good to go. Just follow those couple little steps. There's really nothing to it. 
Um, just make sure all the hardware works good, the knobs, the brake systems, the drag move like it's supposed to, tight and loosened. Um, the clicker works like it's supposed to, and just the only thing that's gonna make it cheaper or more expensive is how it looks. Is there scratches, is there dents and dings, or is it not? For all these couple things, you guys, I hope to see you on the lake this year with your new setup that you bought. I hope this video helps you. Go out, buy your own video, buy your own rod and reel, buy your own bait and tackle, rig it. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below, as well as I'll drop the Instagram, and then we have TikTok as well if you want to check out that. I appreciate it. If you guys, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. That way you guys can get notified if I post any more videos. If there's any other educational videos that you guys want to see that may help you out, comment down below. Someone wanted to see me buy a rod, so here I am posting a video of me buying a rod. I appreciate it, you guys. You guys rock. I will see you on the lake this year. Watch out the fish out.